Last one, let's rock and roll. So fasting, um, I just ate 46 jelly beans before I came up here. So I have no idea why I did that. Just want to confess it before you and let you, it could be a quick talk. So, um, so fasting, this one of fasting, all of you fast uh, in some way. Whenever you sleep at night, you are fasting. You go six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 hours if you don't have any children in the house um, and you fast, then you wake up and you eat cereal or Pop-Tarts or pizza, if you're a weirdo, uh, tacos, and then you have a meal that we call break fast. You're breaking, you need to do that, right? You're breaking your fast that you fasted that night while you're sleeping, um, but this kind of fasting is when you're awake. Uh, Bible fasting is when you're actually intentionally doing this during the day, uh, throughout your week, whatever it is, and you are um, not eating things. So let me give you tonight uh, what fasting is. Um, how you should do it, and why you should do it, all right? So the what and the how and the why, and then we'll go eat some more, likely somewhere, something. So, uh, okay, so last talk tonight. So what is fasting? Fasting is, you can have lots of definitions of this. My definition is something uh, along these lines. Fasting is essentially not eating in order to feast on God more intently, Fasting is not eating food for a certain amount of time in order to feast on God more intently. So you're refraining from eating, you're abstaining from food, so you can taste and see how good God is, how powerful, how glorious, how awesome, as words that Moody ripped off earlier about John Owen, um, how beautiful God is. That's the main reason that you are fasting, is that you are feasting on God. Uh, and we'll talk more about what the nuts and bolts are like here in a bit and kind of why we're, uh, why we're doing this. So you have in the Bible, Moses fasted, the nation of Israel fasted very often. Uh, Daniel fasted, Ezra, Nehemiah, they fasted. David fasted, Jesus fasted, Paul fasted, the early church fasted, C.S. Lewis fasted. So it must be right to actually uh, to do that. So people in the Bible and church history, they have fasted and they did that to feast on God and pursue him and press their life into him and beg of him to move and ask of him to do glorious things uh, among them. And they did this through the discipline of fasting. So it's not eating, all right, to feast on God more intently, more intentionally in your life. Now, how do you do it? So that's what it is. How do you fast? Um, in the Bible, fasting is mostly pertaining to food. Uh, it's sometimes food and water, so Moses neither ate nor drank for 40 days and 40 nights, but most often fasting is talking about food. Um, it's assumed that you would drink some water, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to give you tonight, I'm going to give you some practical ways to do this. Um, I do not recommend going uh, any more than a day, a day and a half, maybe two days without drinking water, okay? So whenever you fast from food, um, drink lots of water as you're doing that, okay? If you choose to do both, food and water, uh, then be very careful because you may die. Just being honest with you, so... Um, so here are some ways you can do it. I think I've got all these on the screen uh, behind me. Here are just some practical ways. There are lots more examples you probably could throw out there, but here's some practical ways for you to fast from food. Um, now, you can fast from things like Netflix or, I don't know, TV shows. That, that's, that's your own conscience. The issue tonight is about food, okay? Um, so here's a few things that you would do. You can try to fast all day. All right, so you wake up and whatever meals rhythm that you have, two, three, four, five, six, if you're doing whatever it is, uh, you take all those meals off and you drink only water. All right, you do not eat anything for the entire day. And in that time, I'll show you what to do here as you're, as you're fasting. So that's one, one example. Um, an easier option would be to go from sun up to sun down. So if you wake up and it's dark outside, you can eat. When it's light, when the sun comes up, you stop eating for the entire day until the sun goes down and it gets dark and you can eat that night and break your fast that way. That's another option uh, as well. You can fast from one meal. Okay, pick your favorite meal, whatever that time is, and do not eat that meal. That's a kind of a, a beginner's step for this. Um, you can fast from lunch to lunch. So you wake up, eat breakfast, eat lunch, then skip dinner that night, skip breakfast the next day, then break the fast with lunch the next day. Makes sense? So you go from lunch to lunch. That way you're eating in both days and not eating uh, in, in two days, uh, two day period there. You can fast for 40 days. Okay, it's in the Bible. Um, see a doctor first and see a pastor. 
Okay, if you choose to do this, if God is, I mean, God may lead you to fast for 40 days. Okay, you need to get medical attention if you're going to attempt that. Uh, if you've never fasted before in your entire life, don't start with 40. I'm just saying. God's not calling you to start with 40 days. I promise you that, okay? You may think he is, but, he, but he's uh, not yet. Work your way up to that if you choose to go crazy that, that way. Um, if you have any questions on how to do this, be, uh, feel free to ask me afterward. Ask Rex. I think he sent some things out today for this. Um, whenever you're fasting, though, um, as Moody just said, you're meditating, okay? You are pressing into God. You are praying you're taking that meal off and you're opening the word up and you are growling over it literally. Because likely your stomach will be growling as you're not eating at that time anyway. So you're actually, you're growling over the word. You are devouring, you're sinking your teeth into God's word. Um, that is your bread, that is your food, that is your life in this moment whenever you are fasting. So you meditate, you seek and you savor and you worship, and you taste, and you repent, and you confess, and you press your life into God in that moment when you will be eating otherwise, okay? Uh, some cautions whenever you're doing this, just some, some physical, some spiritual. Um, whenever you break your fast, don't go crazy. If you've not eaten for 24 hours, do not go to Whataburger and go insane on the menu, okay? You're going to want to do that, but go light, all right, go to Whole Foods and just sample stuff for a while and break your fast very lightly, okay? Um, your stomach shrinks down whenever you do this, and so whenever you break your fast, um, go some fruit, go some veggies, go light, don't go crazy whenever you, uh, whenever you do that. It uh, will not serve you well if you do. Um, again, I said if you fast from food and water, um, then do not go for very long if you, uh, if you do that. Uh, guard yourself when you're fasting, because you're going to see what's inside of you whenever you start fasting. So you'll think things like, I'm angry because I'm hungry. Or I'm lustful because I'm hungry. And the issue is, you're just angry. And you tend to use food to just cover that stuff up and numb the pain and the gnaw that's inside your soul at times. That's how we use food. And so fasting has a way of bringing to the surface what's really, we're harboring bitterness, anger, frustration, unforgiveness, whatever it is, fasting brings those things out. You're weaker physically, you're weaker spiritually in some, in some moments, you're more vulnerable to temptations, so guard yourself when you're fasting, okay? So Jesus fasts, the Bible calls us to do this. Fasting does not uh, merit or earn God's favor or somehow twist God's arm. It's not extra credit with God when you fast, okay? Fasting is just what Christians do. So Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, he says uh, three categories. He says, when you give, give like this, you know, in secret. Your Father who's in secret, he rewards you. When you pray, you pray like this. Our Father which art in heaven. When you fast, you fast like this. So he puts giving and praying and fasting all on the same plane there. So fasting is assumed in the Bible. Christians, who, people who follow Jesus, they give and they pray and they fast. It's woven in the fabric of our being to actually refrain from food, uh, to, feast on, to feast on God. And it's not going to kill you, by the way. Okay, Jesus fasted. You're like, well, he died. But it wasn't from fasting, okay? It was from other things that he died from. It wasn't from fasting. No one's died from this yet, I don't think, that's been documented. So number three, last one, um, why do we do this? I say this one for last because I think it's the most important one. Why do we fast? We fast because God is our food. Fasting says to God, you are the one that sustains me. Not food, not Target, not H-E-B. You are the one, the, not bread, not steaks, not tacos. Whatever your, whatever your favorite food is, that doesn't sustain you. God does. And so fasting is a way of declaring to God, God, I live on you. Jesus, you are the bread that came down from heaven and you were broken for me. I live by that bread. You're the wine that was poured out for me. The blood was spilled. I feast on that. You are my food. You are my drink. You nourish me. You sustain me. That's what fasting essentially declares. You also fast when you really, really, really need God. 
Now, just so we're clear, you always need God. You don't wean yourself off of God, okay? So my sons, five, three, and one, they need me all the time. They can't work a job. They can't drive a car. One of them can't talk yet. Okay, there's no way they need their dad always until college, and then, then I'm out. So they got 18 years, and then I'm done, okay? So, but for now, they always need their dad. But there are times when they really, really need me. When they're hurting, when they're upset, when they've fallen down the stairs, which is about once every other day, they, they need their dad to come around them and love them and encourage them and care for them. They really, really need me in those moments. Now, there are times that you really, really need God. You need his wisdom. You need his direction. You need God just to reach down and move and do something. And fasting is a way to focus yourself on God and, and posture your, yourself before him and sync up with him in this way. Um, and he hears your your voice through this. So uh, here's what a couple of verses, um, I think Doug read from Isaiah 58. Um, it's, it's about really it's righteous, unrighteous kinds of fasting. But here's what God said in um, Isaiah 58 verse 4. He says, behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. So they're fasting and they're punching apparently. There's no justice is what's going on here is why God is so angry. But notice what God says to them, the indictment here. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice be heard on high. It will not make your voice be heard by me. And so what he's saying is this kind of fasting, it doesn't do anything with God. It's hollow. It's, the heart is not right. There's no justice there. But the right kind of fasting does make your voice, makes it heard on high. So fasting in this sense, it essentially it serves your prayers. Fasting is the servant of prayer. Okay? It aids us in our prayers. It postures us toward God more intently. We're more focused. We're more humble before Him because we're starving. And we just tend to need Him more in those, those moments. Um, here's what Ezra says. Ezra chapter 8. Uh, then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava that we might humble ourselves before God, and notice this, to seek from Him. Now, they're in exile. they got a long way to go with women, kids, animals, a long way to go. A safe journey for ourselves, our children, and all our goods. So, yeah, we have this long journey ahead of us. We need God to protect us and guide us and sustain us. And so He calls for a fast to humble Himself and to seek after His God for His, for his help. He really, really needs God in this moment, okay? Also, fasting, you see it linked in the Bible with brokenness, confession, and repentance. Um, you see David doing this. You see Daniel. You see Ezra. You see Nehemiah. They hear about something that's going on. They themselves commit some, some sins against God, and they humble themselves, and they're broken, and fasting is involved with this. So let me give you, let me give you those. Joel chapter 2. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. He's calling Israel back to himself and saying, you humble yourself, you fast, you push aside food for a while. And those desires and thirst and pleasures and tastes, you push all that aside and you come after me. You press your life into me, you seek after me, fasting aids us in this. Daniel chapter 9, um, Daniel is about to confess all the sins of his people of the nation of Israel. He, he weighs these things on himself, and chapter 9, when he, before he begins, he says, then I turn my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And so it's, it's coupled with, uh, with mourning, with repenting, with lamenting, with grieving over something. What's the purpose of that? to press into God, to get more of Him, more of His presence, more of His power, more of Him in their life is the reason that this is going on. And so fasting, essentially, it, it zooms us into God. It aids our prayers. It serves our prayers. We can see Him more intently, desire Him more, worship Him more, confess to Him more, uh, and fasting is what uh, is what aids us. So you have some homework. 
Uh, you'll discuss here in a bit, but your homework is to, as a cohort, you fast within the next month. So you discuss now how you might do this. Talk about what this, uh, how this kind of hits you. There's going to be some questions on the screen behind me, but uh, we want you to decide when you can fast together, how you'll do this, what you'll pray about, what texts you'll think over, um, so you guys can chat for a bit.